Yeah. He's got nine attacks starting out. So he could have 12. Yeah. <laughs> Way has finally brought you here. Behold, Forge the Narrative. Hey everybody, welcome to Forge the Narrative. My name is Paul, your host. I'm joined by Adam Camilleri. Ethan, everybody. And Red Powell. What up? We are right off of the heels of the LVO. It was such a pleasure saying hey to folks that listen to the show over the course of the weekend. I absolutely loved it. Yeah, thank you to you, everyone and anyone who came and said good day. It was really nice. Couldn't go anywhere in the hall without you know seeing a bunch of cool people playing games, enjoying Warhammer, and even better when you can get some fist bumps and say what's up. They like the show. It, it can warm my heart the whole time. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I just, I mean, I'm with you 100. It, again, we've talked about it being like a family reunion before, and it's just such a big deal for me. I mean, I, I, you know, honestly, and from all of our position, you know, I, and to be able to meet Tanya in person, you know, I'm sorry she couldn't be with us tonight, but to be able to engage with everyone else in person as well, and, and to be able to see you all, the, the whole family reunion piece, it's just such a big deal for me. I mean, th- and to be fair, you know, honestly, did you all get to play any games? <laughs> I did not. Uh, me, Adam, no. did you? No. Yeah, it, me neither. But you know what? That's did probably, uh, it, it's one of the highlights of my year on an annual basis even though I didn't get to play a single game as much as I would love to, the ability to just engage and communicate to everybody to see everybody. And you, you know, you see everybody kind of, I'm fortunate if I can see as many as I, I'd like to through all the different events. But a lot of times it's kind of like, you know, regional aspects. Like I see some people here or I go somewhere else and I see them there or whatever. But then you come to something like the LVO and it's just this huge gathering from all over. And it, it's just such a good time. I, I really, uh, can't wait till the next one. Can't wait for the next opportunity. I think Adepticon be the next big one coming up soon. Yeah, I, I man, if I could, I know. So, I mean, the Army team is going to have some representation there, but unfortunately, I've got just a little bit of training, and it happens to fall right in line with that. So, oh, I, no. I, yeah, I know. I hate. I mean, got to do what you got to do, right? And uh, if you love what you do, you'll never work another day in your life. Uh, so, I, I can't complain because I do love what I do. But um, unfortunately, I'll have to miss out on the awesome opportunities that come with Adepticon. You know, last year was my first year and I just had such an amazing time. It's definitely worth checking out. I was doing yeah, some commentary come. from the Sigmar side. Yeah. That yeah, was a blast. That crowd over it there is... like it was awesome. It's a party atmosphere. Way yeah, different. <laughs> During the awards, it was wild. Like, they were rowdy as... And it was nice. <laughs> well, to see that energy, you know, it's uh, but it translated into fun, like fun games. Like everyone was, even in the finals, people were rooting for both sides. Like the same people were rooting for both sides. That's uh, awesome. Of the finals and, and cheering on everybody's kind of kind of accolades and what they were doing during the game. It came down. To, it was a very tense game. It actually came down to um, like the last turn, the last die rolls of the game, and almost got called incorrectly at the end. And but Ooh. they fixed it, or they or they realized it, you know. Of course, before scores were submitted, and it was a nail biter. And when I say people were cheering for both sides, it's like all the people were cheering for the person they thought won, and then 30, 30 seconds later, they were cheering for the other guy. So <laughs> that was amazing. Oh, but Adam, I know you were on the forty k side. Yeah, that was amazing in and of itself. The um the semi final game between uh, there was an Aussie versus. Uh, the legend, uh, Sean Naden in the semifinals, and they put in a score rung on turn three, which is entirely their responsibility to score their game. And because of that, they realized um, they couldn't make it right in any other way but then to uh, roll it, a roll off. So biggest Age of Sigmar event of all time, called by yourself, biggest 40k event of all time, called by myself, and to get into the final of the biggest 40k event of all time was a roll off. <laughs> roll off between two absolute gents, a gentleman's agreement. Absolutely incredible. Well, hey, look, we play an exciting game. Exciting things happen. And, you know, sportsmanship was high all around. A uh, really cool time to be there and be a part of that. Uh, check out some of the coverage if you haven't already. Um, had a lot, like the Sigmar chat was so cool. Like people were uh, like really helpful to other players and helpful to us, you know, me and um, Andy Talbot, who was commentating with me, you know, working through some issues for some armies that uh, that maybe we had you know, less familiarity with, and it was just a really good time. 
Can't can't stress that enough. Yeah, and he did a good job, legitimately. Because that was his first time, right? First time ever. I mean, natu- yeah. Naturally, he's jumping in the hot seat with the uh, the champion yourself uh, <laughs> at, at the at the reins. But yeah, he was no passenger. No, got into it. You know, it's like one of the things. Give him a little pep talk before we start, and uh, off to the races. Uh, very cool. We want to talk about world eaters today, though. Oh snap! I know world eaters. You know. I know people dig this faction and even better when you get like new models and a new Primark and new rules. It's a whole thing, man. I mean, you know, let me put my, push my glasses that I don't wear up on my face a little bit. As I say, like, you know, I did it first. I'm kidding. I didn't do it first. I've just been a huge (laughs) fan, but to see it like play out, um, and all the hype that it's getting right now, I'm really excited. I mean, I, I think that it's going to be awesome. I think that they've built some really thematic components. I mean, clearly from the stuff that I've seen from the Warhammer community articles, uh, Blood Tithe is coming back. Uh, which Blood Tithe? I think we've talked about it before. Blood Points, you know, from the the Corn Demonkin from Old Seventh Edition. So to have that come back now, um, I think it's really exciting. That that mechanic was really good, really played into it. For an army that gets no psychic capabilities, the, the blood tithe is something that I think really makes up for a lot. I think it was the best mechanic of 7th edition. Really paved the way for, I think I mentioned it a couple of weeks ago, all the resource, internal resource mechanics that we have now. Right. Man, Blood Tithe was the, the primogenitor. I'm so, I'm so keen to see it back. The OG. The Primark, if you will. <laughs> the Primark <laughs> of, of the internal faction resource systems. <laughs> oh, don't, make, don't say it like that. We need, an acronym. Acronym. we need an acronym. No. <laughs> don't, don't do I-F- that. IFRC. <laughs> IFRS. Yeah, perfect. Stop making it nerdy. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, I, well, let's, let's talk about Blood Tithe. The Blood Tithe is... Uh, different for for this time is that you gain blood tithe points each time a unit is destroyed you gain one btp at the end of each phase if any character monster or vehicle units were destroyed that phase you gain one additional btp at the end of each phase if any titanic units were destroyed that phase you gain one additional btp for example at the end of the fight phase one titanic vehicle character unit and one other unit have been destroyed, you would gain one blood type point for each unit as they were destroyed. Then at the end of the phase, you would gain one additional blood type point because a character or vehicle unit had been destroyed and one additional blood type point because a Titanic unit had been destroyed for a total of four BTPs during that phase. Why do you get an acronym and I don't? Well, that's in the book. And this one is about blood type points, not internal resource allocation tools for our... <laughs> uh, but no, that is that is sick. That is really cool. Um, can I ask the big question though? Because it's been alluded to that you can resurrect Angron. So, so please, please tell yeah, me how this works. You absolutely can. You absolutely can. And let me like like give you the like treatise on how the the BTPs and the expenditures work. Is that you can use them to buy abilities that last for the rest of the game. It's not like an end of turn thing or a one phase thing. They they last until the end of the game such as Wrathful Devotion for Blood Tithe points until the end of the battle. Each time a World, world Eater's model from your army would lose a wound, on a six, that wound is not lost. Wait, that, that's just army-wide for yeah. the rest of the game? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Savage Guidance until the end of the battle. Each time a melee attack is made by a World Eater's model from your army, add one to that attack's hit roll. Yep. It's, it's, good, it's good stuff. So to answer your question specifically, yeah. though, uh, Reborn in Blood. Six blood tide points. Place a destroyed Angron model from your army into Blasphemous Reserves with eight wounds remaining. That model is no longer considered to be destroyed and can be set up again in your reinforcement step as if it had the Warp Strike ability. Yeah, let's do it. It's going. Infinite Angron. <laughs> I mean, I guess it can't be infinite, technically. Once you run out of people to kill, like it happens. But Well, the know. game will end. Sure. Yeah, that's right. Somebody wins and Corn ultimately comes out on top. Yeah. So I like this a lot. Um, I like this a lot for a multitude of different reasons. I like that this actually feels well balanced for what it is because he comes back and resol- arrives essentially from Deep Strike Reserve as, as the best amalgam of different what this is called. So he Deep Strikes back on the table nine inches away. That means he is nullified from getting to the best bits, unless he rolls the nine, in which case, you know, he's, hopefully if you're savvy about this, He's not charging something juicy and really, really potent. But that puts him out of commission for at least a turn from getting to your best stuff. 
So if you've killed him once, but here's, here's the opposite effect. If let's say I go first and I'm playing like Tau and I'll, I just railgun him between the eyes, he's going to come back closer to me than when I just killed him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm helping. <laughs> this is not good. Uh, with, yeah, that's exciting. With the rest of the army coming forward, that's, I think that's the plan is like run a bunch of eight bounds and red butchers up the table and hope everybody spends time killing Angron. Exactly right. And then you just re-rack him, you know, reload the Red Angel and shoot him back in the battlefield. There is a BTP here, rage-fueled invigoration until the end of the battle. Add one to charge rolls made for World Eaters units in your army, and that is three blood type points. Oh, fantastic. So you can get a nice eight with a CP re-roll. Uh, I mean, yep. there's that, there's that, right? So that's just one thing. And then on top of that is a uh, the Lord Invocatus, who allows you to pregame move folks. And then on top of that are the Juggernaut Lords, who also give you plus two inches to movement and to core units. And so you're talking about things really starting to move. I mean, and the eight bound move exceptionally far already at base value. So hmm. there is a ton of movement on this army. I was really excited to see how they... Would, are gonna go, we're going to go about making the world is not just feel like Blood Angel Space Wars, like a, a sisters even, just like another fast, merely centric power armor army. And I think they've yeah. done it. I think they really have done it. A lot of the old like relics and you know banners and that kind of stuff are in the army still. Like the Berserker Glaive is the thing. Each time an attack is made with this weapon, an unmodified six scores two additional hits. Neg three AP, two damage, plus two strength. Sick. Pretty good. Uh, favorite of corn in your command phase. If your warlord's on the battlefield, you gain one blood tithe point. That's a warlord trait. Yep. Uh, I don't. I don't mind that. I think that's. Oh, a, I think that's that sounds very takeable. I mean, especially if you can get to you know two or three on the first turn, and then by turn two you're rocking and rolling with you know pluses to charge or pluses to hit or whatever. How does Khan uh, work now? Does Khan still like? Is he like Mister Stop Hitting Yourself? <laughs> Let's check him out. Uh, you want to chart with Karn first Respect, instead of man. Angron? So, I mean, we yeah, gotta we gotta no, ramp up. No, let's right? go ahead. We, he wanted to just gotta, open the door. Let's do it. Okay. We gotta step up to the big boy, right? We can't we can't blow the lead. So, uh, Karn the Betrayer has a four plus invulnerable save. He has a legendary cool. killer aura. While a friendly World Eaters core unit is within six inches of this model, each time a model in this unit makes an attack, a re-roll uh, wound roll of one. Yep. So, and then the Betrayer at the end of the fight phase, if there are any other friendly units within three inches of this model, roll a d six. On a one, select one of those units that suffer. That unit suffers two mortal wounds. Oh, that's not too bad. That's fine. You could have a six up against that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you could, you could. So it has the Arch Slaughterer. Each time this it's a warlord is selected to fight, if there are six or more enemy models within three inches of this warlord, you until those attacks have been resolved, add D three to this warlord's attack characteristics. Yeah, he's got nine attacks starting out, so he could have twelve. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at neg four AP damage three string six. What? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Hold on. What? Say that again. <laughs> what? Yes. Gorchild so is str- yep. is strength user, which happens to be six on Karn. Neg four AP three damage. Yeah. Let's just soak that in for a second. <laughs> yeah. Holy crap. Twelve, 12 attacks. Yeah. And I've I've got to assume there's ways to get more blood tithing plus one attack or something or other auras like. But doesn't who cares? Twelve is a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so throw a thirteen on there. And, and yeah, I mean, add one to the attack roll, add one to charge rolls, um, get a five plus invulnerable save from, well, I feel no pain from mortal wounds, and then warp blades, which is the one I think we're fishing for here until the end of the battle. Each time a warlord model from your e- world eaters model from your army makes a melee attack, improve the armor penetration characteristic of that attack by one. So, you know, neg five AP. Neg five, no big deal. Oh, Easy yeah, reach. No worries. Easy yeah, reach. Yeah, yeah. NBD. Yeah. I mean, it's a good thing that, you know, I'm a contempt silly. Oh, wait, it doesn't. <laughs> oh, man, I was about to do the same thing. Now I regret uh, thinking that because you did it, Adam. Oh. Yeah, I was just in sync. There's no denying it. Our bond, Red, this is tight. <laughs> so the Lord Invocatus, uh, or uh, Lord Avocado, is... <laughs> I mean, we've got Lord Disco. We've got, we've got to have Lord Avo. Yeah. So leading the charge while friendly World Eater's core unit is within six inches in this model. Each time that unit is selected to make a normal move or advance until the end of the phase, add two to the move characteristic of models in that unit. He moves 12. I see this as like a way f- to keep maybe the, you know, the, the Berserkers pretty close to him for the first turn. Yep. And then he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't want him nearby too often, right? The, no, it's Lord Invocatus, as this... we're talking about. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you want uh, him nearby. He's a Terminators big are also core, so I think that helps. 
uh, there is a World Eater's Master of Executions, too. Well, because why not, right? Yeah. I mean, six attacks, five wounds, warp-sided butcher. This model is eligible to perform a heroic intervention if it's within six inches horizontally or five inches vertically. Each time this model uh, makes a heroic intervention, you know, uh, it must go as close as any model over the engagement range. Uh, it can move up to six of character units. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Each time this model makes a melee attack against an enemy character, you can re-roll the wound roll. Is acts of dismemberment. Each time an attack is made with this weapon, an unmodified hit roll of six inflicts two mortal wounds on the target and the attack sequence ends. Sounds, it, it <laughs> sounds very similar to yeah. the... Is it the Judicia? The Judica? It's always, always I, just, I think I've really just realized that they're like the they're dark mirrors of each other. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much it. Mm. Uh, are we, can we work up to Angron yet? Or do you still want to like, you want to go like World Eaters Lord? All I want to know is do I get rewarded for taking units of eight dudes? Like uh, eight, so, the eight, oh, damn it. I wish. That's all I wanted. No. I was really surprised with the, the eight bound and everything that they go up to their units of three. I was surprised they weren't like units of four. Yeah, it's uh, you can get six eight yeah. bound, which is like a crime, isn't it? I mean, is that is that's that probably is, what set them crime. all off. It's not the butcher's nails. It's like... <laughs> Are you saying if there was if there was eight in a unit, they'd be peaceful gentlemen? Like they'd be like they'd just calm right down if there was eight of them. Could have righted the whole universe. Uh, the the exalted eight bound. Uh, the cold eight bound. Why can't I? Uh. Yeah, well now it's just that is a six pack. Doesn't sound near as intimidating. Oh, no. yeah, I, that that bothers me. It's gonna it's gonna yeah yeah it's gonna live rent free in my head for a bit. Yeah, Red, <laughs> you're, you're you're probably thinking about the exalted eight bound, which do have a three unit cap that's it yeah yeah three unit cap but the others are six you said yeah the so that means i can i can run them at fours and then i can at least yeah. get to multiples of eight i mean i'm sure you know at six you could do that too but you're right like, yeah how many uh eight bound max units of eight bound and, and exalted eight bound do you need to get to hit a number divisible by eight i mean that takes us to the the army of renown right where uh the eight bound count as for angron count as and this is coming from the war commu warhammer community article where they talk about it uh, this army of renown where the eight bound count is objective secured, which I think is a pretty big deal. Uh, eight bound, like I said, there really are no joke. They have movement nine. So if you're around the Lord Invocatus, they're moving, you know, 11. Yeah. Horn possessed on angry crack. Yeah. So each time, so they're eight bound eviscerator. Each time a bear fights, it makes one additional attack with this weapon, which is neg three, two damage strength to the user, which happens to be six. Or the heavy chain glaive. Each time an attack is made with this weapon, make two hit rolls instead of one. Neg three AP, one damage. Uh, and then the blood scent, if this unit is in strategic reserves, it can be set up in the battle rounds if it was one higher than it currently is, regardless of any mission rules. Note this means this unit can be set up on the battlefield during the first battle round. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Who needs drop yeah. pods? Just I come know. in, man. Stop it. They just shoot them from orbit, and they're so angry. They're fine. Just oh. like Goku impacting... Yeah. They have a five plus uh... vulnerable save. <laughs> uh, uh, and then enemy units within six subtract one from the leadership. Yep, cool. That's the regular eight bound. Makes the exalted sense. eight bound don't get this. Uh, the exalted eight bound have a four plus in vulnerable save. Fantastic. Are they like greater possessed? Uh, could, or, could they be they like, of three? Are they like a blitz? Obliterators? Like, or, sorry, people are saying, sorry, people are likening them to what mutilators used to be, right? Uh, yeah, I yeah. could see that they're yeah. very mutilator like. I like that. I like that mutilator isn't gone, deleted from our lexicons. Oh, there's totally no keyword mutilator on here. I'm just saying they happen to be fighty and kind of obliterator y. Well, they have it in my heart. And that's what really matters. All right. These are three plus save models, not two plus save models. <laughs> okay. How many? What toughness? How many wounds? Uh, they are toughness for the exalted eight bound. Toughness five, yep. three wounds apiece. Okay. Yeah. No, they're not. They're not a blitz. Same for the regular eight bound. Also, toughness five, three wounds. Uh, some of the other stuff in the in the book. A you can get the predators, get forge fiends, mauler fiends, and hell drakes and rhinos, and of course the lord of, lord of skulls and land raiders. Cool. Uh, I wonder if the eight bound cool. can go in land raiders. Yeah. Uh, let me check. Let's see if it says. You can. Bet they, they are, can. They, are they are they the toughness nine variety? Now you know they're toughness nine. I okay, yeah. That. This model can, has a transport capacity of ten world eater infantry models. Each terminator and eight bound model takes up two spaces. Yes, I don't, I don't hate this. <laughs> it's time, man. It's time. It's time. <laughs> four, four in a character. Four in a character. Four in a character. Yeah. Four uh, eight bound and a master of executions. Yeeteth. Off you go. <laughs> Yeeteth. I love it. Uh, you can. I think you take spawn too. Got to be yep. take spawn, right? Chaos spawn. Yep. What self-respecting chaos army doesn't I take 
Chaos Spawn. I mean, never mind the rest of everything else that Chaos may have, but Chaos Spawn better be. Able I to mean, them. it's the it's the end of the it's the end of the journey. It's the it's the destination for all <laughs> yeah. true worshippers. It's what you aspire. You you, you look at the, the top of the the Chaos Pyramid, and you're like, it's Spawn not. It's right at the, the top. The one above Demon Prince. <laughs> Doesn't sooner or later everything become a spawn one way or another? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, I disagree with this hardcore, but okay. It, it goes to apotheosis, spawnhood. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. It doesn't. But yeah, it's funny. I mean, I don't want to be a spawn, but I feel like it's, you know, if you're on the path, the eightfold path. Just think how simple your life would be if you were a spawn, like deep down. <laughs> yeah, good point. It, oh, it's it's I... true. It's honest, good, good, hard fun, you know? I promise we'll talk about Angron in a second, but I want to go over some of the stratagems. There are a couple of new mechanics in the stratagems that are here. So the me- the mechanics in the stratagem kind of give you options of paying one or two CP in a couple of these. One of these is Skulls for the Skull Throne. Uh, use this stratagem when an enemy warlord is destroyed by a melee attack made by a world eater's character model from your army. Select one or both of the following. Bullet point one is you gain two additional blood tide points. Bullet point two is until the end of the battle, add one to the advance and charge rolls made for the world eater's character model. If you selected one of the options above, the stratagem cost one CP, otherwise it's two. Yeah, I kind of look at this as like if your character, you've sent them over there, they're on the kind of their last legs, they've taken out the enemy character, and you know they're not going to be charging whatever later on because they're going to get shot and killed. Just spend the one CP and get your two blood tide points. They bring anger back next round. Yeah, oh yeah. Uh, I mean, there are some armies that just can't stop you, like, like knights. You know, you're gonna stop. Uh, you're gonna stop an anger on. You're gonna stop a, a friggin' Lord Avo from making it to your knight who's on like a couple of wounds left, getting that scalp and powering up. It's gonna be hard. Blood Frenzy is another one. Use this stratagem in the fight phase when an enemy unit is selected to fight. Select one World Eater's core unit from your army that is within engagement range of that enemy unit until the end. Sorry, in, until that enemy unit's attacks have been resolved. Each time a model is selected in the selected unit is destroyed by a melee attack. If that model has not fought this phase, do not remove it from play. The destroyed model can fight after the enemy unit's attacks have been resolved, and then is removed from play. If selected. World Eater's unit is a troop. The stratagem costs one CP. Otherwise, it costs two CP. It's a little fight on death with a blood frenzy. Have to have it. I mean, if they don't fight on death, who who, who deserves to? <laughs> I mean, I'm of the opinion all their characters should have exploding mechanics as they're like just going absolutely furiously into the grave. That does sound pretty cool. Red Butchers is back. Use this stratagem in the fight phase when a World Eater's Terminator or 8-bound unit from your army is selected to fight. Until the end of the phase, each time a model in that unit makes an attack, add one to the damage characteristics of that attack. So that's different, right? That's not the Red Butchers of old. So it is back with that title, but Red Butchers used to be choose a unit of Terminators and turn them into Berserker Terminators. Mm -hmm. So I guess for the crowds out there that are big fans, are there Terminators like that anymore, or is it just Terminators? Uh, they are just Terminators. That's okay. I think it's just something that you know, kind of got to embrace and run with in new stuff. Like I mean, got ter- Angron. Terminators with four attacks apiece. Right, right, right. I mean, they're they're serious Terminators. That's for sure. And you know, I think turning their accursed weapons into damage too. Uh, each time the bearer fights, it makes one additional attack with his weapon. So you know, lots of attacks, damage two, neg three AP, and that's not counting you know the other weapons you can't equip them with. Right. Uh, malicious volleys. Instead of following the normal rules for rapid fire weapons, models in the unit uh, shooting a combi bolter or bolter bolt gun profile of a combi flamer uh, always make double number of attacks instead of only when the target is within half range. Yeah, so that's that's the carryover for yeah. um, all the Terminator esque and the biker esque. Do they get bikers? Uh, I did not see any bikers. Interesting. Yeah, I, I, uh, bikers and raptors are the ones I want to know if they're in there because those they add a little bit of um, I suppose flexibility to things. You're not just stuck with uh, rhinos and I think you're going to be rhinos and land raidering. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, on release, T-Suns and Death Guard were in a similar position with that quite limited um, unit options and they expand on in waves. This is the very first World Eaters Codex we've ever had, right? Like standalone. I mean, Corn Demon Ken, sure. World Eaters. Yeah, that's, pretty, yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I I'd be, wouldn't be surprised if this is just the beginning of things. But yeah, all right. it's time. It's time. Let's let's talk about the big bad. It's the hell no, I'm joking. A- Angron. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. All right, Angron. 18 power level, uh, 18 wounds, what he starts with also. Strength 9, toughness 7, 12 attacks, 2 plus save, 
Um, the uh, has two um, weapons: the spine grinder and Salmonarius. The uh, black yep, sword. Yep, that's one of the one of yep. the. Yeah, it's the sword. Yeah. Uh, each time an attack is made with this weapon, select one of the profiles below to make that attack with. So the skull ticking slash is plus five strength, neg four AP, D three plus three damage. Or the bloodletting sweep. Each time an attack is made with this weapon profile, make three hit rolls instead of one, which is neg three AP, one damage. How many attacks does he have on his profile again? Twelve. <laughs> uh, that's he lot. does degrade. Goes from from uh, twelve to ten to eight. Once it, I thought he'd be like Scarbrand, he would go up in attacks, like down in movement and like stuff like that. But yeah, I thought his attacks might go up. Like yeah, but he anyway. never loses. He never gets worse to hit, and never gets weaker. Oh, that's fair. Uh, he just gets a few less attacks. Uh, interesting to note, though, if you bring him back from the dead, he comes back with ten attacks. He's he's in his immediate mid uh, mid bracket. That's cool. So he doesn't come up. He doesn't come at full, but doesn't come at the bottom bracket. So that's a happy medium. But boom, boom, crowd, goes, crowd goes wild. Thanks for coming, everybody. Lord of the <laughs> Arena, uh, in your command phase, select one friendly World Eaters core or World Eaters character unit within six inches of this model until the start of your next command phase. Each time a model in that unit makes an attack, you can re-roll the hit roll. So pretty good. Yep, so chapter master goodness. Yeah, put that Although, on some uh, eight bound. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, I don't. I, I don't know his, his abilities off the top of my head. Does he like give out? Because like Gilliman gives out an aura of Chapter Master still. Like Morvan Vile gives out rerolls to wound as well. Does In he your command, give out an, please. Yep. Select yep. one of the following <laughs> abilities. This model has the ability to use uh, until the start of your next phase command phase. Infectious Rage. While a friendly World Eater's core unit is within six inches of this model, add one of the attached characteristic of that model in the unit. Glorious Sick. Bloodletting. Uh, while another friendly World Eater's unit is within six inches of this model, each time a model <laughs> in that unit makes a melee attack, re-roll hit rolls of one. Uh, and then Righteous Slaughter. While a unit is within six inches of this model, that, that unit cannot fall back. Ooh, there's the killer. That's a backbreaker right there. Yeah, cannot. That's a mechanic right there that people just... Uh, uh, you know, we've talked about the intricacies of the fight phase and charging and everything that goes into it and the back and forth with it. And <laughs> that is something that um, people will, it'll take them a minute to get used to for sure. Yep. The fact that yep. they can't fall back from them if that's what is in effect. Yeah. You get to pick that and obviously be situational. The warlord trait, the red angel, while an enemy unit uh, within the, uh, sorry, while an enemy unit with the objective secured ability is within six inches of this warlord, it loses that ability. It's just too angry. He's, just, he's so angry, he turns off your rules. <laughs> he's going to shout you off that objective. Yeah. <laughs> um, I do. So, just going down the uh, the jank tank for a minute, a lot of um, of the better demon players that I've noticed are taking Scarbrand. They're taking a lot of ways to deny fallbacks. So, you can. Could, I don't know how the points are, or, or the restrictions, or like 25% restrictions or whatever. Um, but you could take Angron, Scarbrand, like, and some other, like, corn demon jank along with this make it feel like corn demon kid and just double down on some of these mechanics that feels pretty sick a couple of those cannons yeah, yeah. i mean you, you gotta you know we talked about the bolter piece and then we look at the cannons and everything there's some aspect to this that you got to realize that that it's it is there is now it may not be the most you know at the forefront of the corn army but there is some advantage to taking to killing things in every phase and being able to kill things in the shooting phase and be able to get those blood tithe points btps yeah. And uh, bring them, bring it to bear, really, to make this army mm. continue to to maintain that momentum. Well, exactly right. You don't want your opponent to be able to play keep away and just nullify that mechanic. You want ways to get some before you come to bear, so you're supercharged when you do, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah I like that a lot. I think that's a. I think a, l a little bit of DAC is going to go along the way. I mean, skull cannons and forge fiends can pick up quite a few units in the in the game at the moment, especially with armor um, contempt not being so so bad for things like auto cannons right and also skull cannons ignore cover just innately yeah. so they're fantastic uh angron is 360 points that is 10 points le uh more than abaddon so <laughs> not bad i think they're a pretty good bargain when you factor in all the rest of the stuff happening in the army and the fact that you can kind of use them a time and a half like you're getting three hundred, you're paying yeah. three hundred sixty points, but you're getting. You know. Well, he al he almost functions like he's wound gated, yeah. As long as you can guarantee you can bring him back, like he almost functions like a Catan, like you, yeah, like as, or a sister's character. You know, you pay the miracle dice and and the the CP, and you bring him back. The only the only thing I'd say is regretful about him is that like if he died turn four, you wouldn't try and bring him back. 
because what then he deep strikes turn five and then has to roll a nine. Otherwise, he's, he's done nothing and you, no point bringing it back. But things like assassinate score at the end of the game. Right. Things like bring it down score at the end of the game. So you can deny people points off getting that kill if you you you, you bring him back late in the game, keep him alive. So I think that's a really cool tactic that uh, well, uh, well did players can bring to bear as well. If I got like, some BTPs and he's dead, I'm, there's no way I'm not bringing him back. <laughs> Yeah, well, he's he's he has to be your wallet as well, I assume, as like a, a, a prime mark level character. So he's four points on assassinate if you kill him, and you're like, oh, you you killed him turn four. Well, I'm going to bring him back in my backfield turn five, and thank you very much. No points for you, sir. Good, yeah, good spot there. Uh, you can take other things in here too, like demon princes and that kind of stuff. But I don't know, it's kind of kind of hard not to want to take the prime mark. Let's take a quick break. We'll come back with some more analysis of this. FTN is brought to you by Discount Games Inc. Please visit them at www.discountgamesinc.com. And don't forget to ask Jay about ways to save even more on your hobby projects. We are back, everybody. I want to talk about these Blood Tithe points. We, we talked about some of the cool things that they do, uh, but we did not talk about like how you, <laughs> when do you act them out or whatever. Uh, at the end of each phase... After gaining any blood tithe points, you can spend them to purchase a blessing of the blood god. You can purchase as many of these blessings of the blood god as you wish during the battle, but you can only purchase one per phase. With the exception of reborn in blood, uh, you can only purchase each blessing of the blood god once per battle. Each blessing of the blood god has an associated BTP cost. If you do not have enough BTP for a blessing, you cannot purchase it. When you select a blessing of the blood god, its BTP cost is deducted from your total. Yeah, reborn in blood as many times as you want. <laughs> Just keep telling you it's just it's awesome that kind of momentum and cycle and really the mechanics behind this it is i, I agree adam it's what separates separates it from just another melee army mm. it is this this kind of it it brings the army i would say out of the typical cycle puts it in its own category of its own and then you bring in angron and you have this reoccurring thing and you have all this like this this mounting momentum this berserker kind of just uh you know, onslaught that goes to the entire army. You can really feel the mechanics in play. And, and as a corn player, I'm extremely excited to see it, it out in the field. Yeah, me too. I think it's going to be absolutely sick. I think there's going to be some ways to jank it. Um, I think an MSU play style is really going to help a lot. And mostly because I think it's going to help you get your your stuff killed early so that you can you can have that tally up when the meaningful stuff makes, makes combat. Well, and so it, it, for me, you know, like looking at it, it it's... I do want tons of berserkers, but at the same time, I don't mind having a bunch of five-man berserker squads. Yeah, they go out. Well, don't forget right? the jackals. I mean, you got right? cheaper jackals, stuff. Jackals, yeah. I mean, there's all sorts of stuff to bring in. Single unit to spawn. Um, you know, even like just getting rhinos killed. It's all going to be fantastic for racking up these points. Each time a unit is destroyed, you gain one blood type point. Hellbrutes is another one. They're never getting destroyed. They're pretty. <laughs> well, then you're fine. It's happy days. Your hellbrute makes it into combat, but uh, they're cheap. They're resilient for the points, so they take usually take an overinvestment of anti-tank to take them down for, for how much they cost. They pack a actual gun, a relevant gun, and they smash when they make it into combat. Plus, they'll give you two blood type points when they go down. Yeah, they need okay, their vehicle and um, uh, a unit. A, a unit. Yeah. They're a vehicle, and they exist. <laughs> they qualify. Yeah, check it out. Yay. <laughs> uh, uh, some excellent deduction there. Yeah. Spot on. Uh, one of the other ones we didn't talk about is Total Carnage. Six blood type points until the end of the battle. Each time a melee attack is made by a world leader model from your army, an unmodified hit roll of a six automatically wounds the target. Fantastic. Why did you just get that all game? That's Oh, man. I keep thinking this is like turn by turn stuff but no you just you just turn this on and it just stays on like um like power from pain for right. uh, for drakari this is phenomenal buffs and i do like yeah. it's at the end of each phase so that you can do this so into the psyche phase well i guess you wiped out four or five units well boom now i'm wounding you on sixes automatically exactly right um, there's some play there yeah absolutely I know we haven't really like crafted a list yet or anything, uh, but the the ones so all the the blood tithe points is the spiteful nullification uh, that gives you a five plus feel no pain against mortal wounds. That's only two blood tithe points. I don't mind that. I don't hate it. I mean, let's okay. Let's think of a world where one does not take anger on in every list. Uh, see, I'm. The filthy meta chaser, and I foresee many a time when Angron won't be the best choice. Yeah, um, I do. I love the idea of Khan, though. Like, do yourself a favor, well, slap Khan in there. But um, I well, mean, 
where I'm Same going with this, all the other pro- yeah is yeah, that there you go. yeah yeah where I'm going with this is that if you're not saving up for reborn in blood twice it kind of frees you up to I mean that's twelve blood tithe points that you have now in your at least mental math have to use to spend on lots of other things yeah army wide uh, um six is to hit auto wound um. Plus to charge, six, I feel no pain. These are all could be things that are all active constantly for your army, like turn three, turn four, depending on how you rack them up. Uh, that six plus feel no pain across the board, the raffle devotion is, a, is only four blood type points. Yeah, wow. Wow. That's incredible. I think that is very doable. Absolutely is. And that's one of those things you can rack up. Like, let's say a, a you know, a psyche phase goes by. They kill enough to give you the blood type points you need. To now, in the shooting phase, you've got a six plus and vulnerable. I'm sorry, I feel no pain. I like this mechanic. I like the fact that it does apply it for the whole game. It's like just when you get it off, and and there will be, I'm sure, ways to engineer. You know, I mean, let's talk about this. Bringing those eight bound down on turn one. That's right. Putting it out there, right? Like if you kill them, it causes its own thing. But at the same time, they they've got a lot of opportunity being able to come down in turn one and what they can do. Uh, the eight bound, let's see their points. Eight pound are 40 points a model. The exalted eight bound are 135 points for the three models. Not bad, especially given their wounds and toughness. Not bad at all. Yeah, and I guess the fact you can buff them and, and then bring them down so early. Maybe they got th- some some points built in for that inherent ability. God, we've been through this. We haven't even talked about berserkers. Right. Haven't even got to the, the meat and potatoes. <laughs> Talk about Angron. Haven't even got, like, that's the steak. Haven't even gotten to the, the real potatoes of this berserkers uh kind of a crime right <laughs> well you think about it is that the berserkers were like the only thing for world leaders for so long that's right and now there's all these other cool things uh, and, and are we moving into a hellbrut meta i think hellbrutes do a lot i think that there's some really awesome aspects to that definitely bring the pain if you can figure out a way to bring your own blood tithe farm you're probably you're probably ahead of the game oh, okay we can talk about berserkers is it uh, four tax piece, uh, two wounds, move six, three plus save. They can get the icon keyword, which is important for you know the other stuff. Uh, for every five models in the unit, one corn berserker bolt pistol can be replaced by one plasma pistol. For every five models in the unit, corn berserkers uh, berserker chain blade can be replaced with one cornate eviscerator, which is a neg four AP two damage weapon plus three strength. Their strength five base, so that moves them up to strength eight. Uh, they have an ability called blood surge. Each time an enemy unit is selected to shoot. If any of those attacks target this unit, after the enemy's unit attacks have been resolved, if any models in this unit were destroyed by those attacks, uh, this unit can make a blood surge move. If, if it does so, any actions uh, this unit is performing fail, then roll a d6. Uh, each model in this unit can be moved a distance in inches up to the result, but must finish the move as close as possible to the uh, closest enemy unit. This unit cannot end its move within engagement range of enemy units. Cool. Other than the closest enemy unit, a unit cannot make a blood surge move in the same turn it disembarked from a destroyed transport, or if it's already in engagement range. Blood surgeon. That's a great. That's a great fun mechanic. Very similar to Black Templar's push. Yeah, for sure. Y'all are the chaos ones. Thanks. <laughs> Everybody's chaos, didn't you know? Whether you want to or not, you're playing the game. <laughs> uh yep uh demon prince is in here i can see that being a pretty good choice uh you can get wings give it 12 inch fly you know I like, basically I'm, I'm kind of attracted to anything that gets across the board faster right i right. think that's key right yeah. and uh this lord invocatus is, is no slouch built in four plus invulnerable did you mention a pregame move i think at the start of the show uh i was going to road with the, of the eight bloody steps at the start of the first bottle round, but before before the first turn begins, you can select up to two friendly World Eater core units within nine inches of the Warlord. The unit and the selected units can each make a normal move. Yeah, boy. So that's uh, very similar to... I mean, Blood Angels have a similar mechanic. Um, Bloody Rose Sisters have a similar mechanic. And good uh, World Eaters 100% should have that mechanic. So the Terminators can move. They are core. Oh my goodness, the 8-bound are core. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. So wait, so it just says core... So I'm assuming it doesn't mean you can move transports. So you can't roll up two rhinos and the warlord? It does say World Eater's core unit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, let me check to see if the core's on the rhino. I don't think so. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought so. They are not core. Probably for the best. If you're going to let them do more than one. Because um, most of these things, you know, like it's one unit of uh, Death Company with a jump pack. It's one unit of... Uh, so it's one rhino for sisters. This is letting you do three. So if you could do like... You know, two by five 
berserkers in a rhino, two by five berserkers in a rhino and a warlord, and just be like, here are four things that'll kill just about anything you got. Yeah. And then turn one, you kill your opponents. Every obsec model your opponent's got in their army, and then they can't win anymore. That would feel bad. Yeah, this is, I, you know, being able to actually get off the line and get into combat seems pretty good. Uh, the eight bound are, I think, going to be standout winners. Uh, Terminators too, though. Um, you know, probably in the hobby lag segment, you're probably going to encounter Terminators a little bit more than you'll encounter the, sooner mm-hmm. than you'll encounter the eight bound. I don't know, Ray, what you think? Man, I mean, I, I think, you know, like you said, with the Terminators piece, I mean, I'm looking at my my old Red Butchers right here right now. I, I think they did some great fan service, and I think that they've really taken the corn world eaters up to the next level for everybody. I, I think that they, they didn't walk away from anything, if that makes sense. Sometimes, you know, when updates happen, you're kind of looking at stuff and you're like, oh, well, uh, that's... That's not necessarily usable anymore. Um, now, they did step away clearly from some of the Chaos Space Marine pieces, right? We don't have Raptors. We don't have people with jump packs. I mentioned that mm. before. I'm a little, it's a little bit of disappointment in that, but I, I think that taking what they have and what's available to us, I, I'm, I'm more than happy with what they have. Uh, the eight bound is kind of weird at first when they st- talked about how it released and they're like three, you know, starting from three to six models, but I get it. I kind of get where they're going with it. I think that the timing of it plays out well uh, with all the other mechanics. And so I, I do think that it's a very well put together codex and I'm really excited to see it play on the table. All I can say is it's a bad time. Right. <laughs> like just the, the, the world leaders got their own book. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, after we saw the, uh, you know, death guard and thousand sons, I mean, it is definitely it's due and I would argue that there's plenty of, of Slanesh, you know, Emperor's Children players out there Absolutely. that can't wait as well. But mm-hmm. you know, clearly they are they're making their way. Um, there there is has been progress. And we've seen this continued development, so it's really exciting to see the the third Demon Primarch hit the table with this Codex. First Primarch in a long time as well. There's been uh, a, was it four years between drinks, or did we figure out it was five years between drinks since um, Morty dropped? Uh, he was in so 27. Extremely exciting. Yeah. 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 Six years, but probably probably five. Yeah. Oof. Anyway, so it's a gorgeous model uh, and we'll definitely be hitting the table. People are going to have to need an Angron contingency, <laughs> much like the heresy. Sanguinius ain't here to save you. Oof. Let's, let's not. <laughs> that book review. Oof. Yeah. There's, there's the time. bingo card check for everybody. Paul mentions Blood yeah. Angels. Good. <laughs> <laughs> and to slip it in here at the end. So. Yeah. Well, folks, that is our show this week. I know it's a little bit of an abbreviated one. We'll be back next week, no doubt, talking about these amazing models and, you know, Red's initial thoughts on the army list here. Kind of curious as to what you think after you start, you know, kind of marinate on what the options are a little bit. Can't wait. Uh, that's it. We'll see you all next week, everybody. All right. See ya. Is that? craft worlds are sentient beings. These hosts are not. Better luck next time, monkeys!